What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. Did you miss me? I know it's been a while since the last upload, but that means we have a handful of Overwatch news to break down from the meantime. First is now live the Archives event yet again. No new mission this time, but the usual new crop of cosmetics, this time themed around historical wars from the character's country of origin. Soldier 1776, a favorite of mine, being an American. Most of the skins you get normally through loot boxes or the currency, but this time they're changing up the weekly unlockable ones that come for free by requiring you to play the archives missions and earn stars to work your way up to those weekly rewards. Normally you could win nine quick play games, which if I had to guess, since you can go on easy mode in the archives missions, replaying the co-op PVE should be easier to rack them up, but it does require you to go there. I'm a bit torn on this as I'd rather just play quick play personally but this may be a clever trick to try to populate those playlists yet again by incentivizing it that those among you that do enjoy playing archives and not waiting forever for a match can get some teammates into those modes. So maybe it's required to renew the interest in those, though I wish quick play wins were optional ways to earn them as well, but I'll have to log in to archives five years later because I cannot live without this new Lucio skin. Otherwise, let's take a look at the recent news I items that we've rounded up since our previous upload. It should come as a shock to no one that an Overwatch mobile game is coming, but it was leaked by the journalist Richard Lewis on the Four Horsemen podcast that it was Blizzard Activision's original intention to announce Overwatch Mobile alongside Overwatch 2 before the big shutdown in the world. This should come as no surprise because CEO Bobby Kotick has screamed this from the mountaintops in repeated investor calls saying that taking their IPs to mobile is a major goal for the company moving forward. Should be no surprise considering the huge success they've had with COD Mobile, they want to replicate that with their other IPs. What would an Overwatch mobile game look like? I've always wanted kind of like a tower defense type thing or turn-based or RTS strategy style game with the mix of the heroes helping out in the missions. I think that would be cool. I wouldn't expect a flat out mobile version of the FPS game we know today, but phones are pretty strong nowadays. So maybe even as ambitious as that may be on the table. Now implicit in Richard Lewis's comment, he said, quote, they wanted to release Overwatch mobile and Overwatch 2 at the same time, essentially, unquote. So that's implying that it was delayed, which is sort of a contested issue where sentences like, how can it possibly be delayed if there was no release set, which is like a developer publisher Jedi mind trick. Yes, we know there wasn't an official delay, but an internal delay is still a delay nonetheless. And if I had to guess, I think the mobile game should be smaller in scope and easier to develop rather than the massive scope that they're planning for Overwatch 2. So for all we know, the mobile game is done or close to it, or who knows, because this implication leads credence to previous leaks that the sequel was intended to drop last year before the shutdown. Remember, the devs did say that they will be trickling out more information about Overwatch 2 over the coming months. There's a chance at some point they decide to release this game at, at some key point in time they find useful, but I would suspect it's more likely that they hold on to the Overwatch mobile game until Overwatch 2 is actually ready, especially if it has any cross-play or interconnect connectivity between the main Overwatch IP. As an example, could you play this separate mobile game and level up your Overwatch 2 PvE heroes? That would be kind of cool, right? I think there might be a chance of some sort of designed interconnectivity between the two, seeing as why else would you want to release them at the same time? Unless it's implied that you could play both without one taking from the other, right? They don't want to release an Overwatch cards game and then it becomes more popular than Overwatch 2. That doesn't seem to help them. Them. I think they would want to enable them to have some congruity if they're intended to come out at the same time. But this is just my speculation. Other bits of Overwatch 2 news. It was found by freeze framing the Overwatch 2 breakdown that bits of the character model of Junker Queen was hidden in the background of some of the footage, implying that they're building out the character. The Queen seems to be quite an easy plug in for one of the half or dozen or so more heroes we would expect to be added to the game that we don't know about clearly yet. Next up, an interesting upgrade for those of you who are lucky enough to have your hands on 
a next gen console, more specifically just the Xbox Series X and S for now, as far as I know. There's advanced graphics options that allows you to play the game at 120 hertz at the cost of some image quality and resolution. More frames can lead to better gameplay performance, but also the Series X can play 4K at 60 hertz, which seems to imply that's the type of benchmark they'll likely be going towards for Overwatch 2, which may be more interesting for PvE, where the second to second frame rate isn't going to result in you getting eliminated. Speaking of Overwatch 2, one of the biggest video game content creators out there, Video Game Dunkey, made an Overwatch 2 video that has sparked a lot of conversation in the community, where Dunkey, I think, is kind of trolling in some of his opinions, but emphasizes the core of what makes Overwatch great, which is ridiculous over-the-top stuff, which maybe will never be competitively balanced, but does make the game interesting, and that's something that Overwatch has always struggled with, and has added to the benefit slash trade-off dilemma of a thing like Roll Queue, which maybe solves having your team argue about getting the basics of a good team comp, but for some, robs some of the majesty and wackiness that made the game appealing to begin with. As Donkey says, with a sequel focused focusing on the PvE rather than the competitive multiplayer, it doesn't have to be balanced, which is a good thing. But uh, those of us who are interested in the competitive side would do care about that balance thing. It, you know, it's pretty important. He talks about the original Roadhog hook and how fun it was to abuse such an unfair mechanic. And you know what? I kind of agree with him. If only there was a way where we could eliminate some of the most broken stuff, but it could still be in the game, but we could like systemize when we play that most broken stuff by sometimes allowing it to be in the competitive game and other times taking it away. I mean, I could never dream of a system that could do such a thing. I mean, surely this just has never even been thought of in any esport game ever. So so why would we even dream to be able to have it in our game? It's just it's not possible. No way. I mean, we, we have to balance all 32 plus heroes all together at the same time and hope they somehow are balanced. That's the only option. There is no other method of mixing up the competitive diversity of the game. Not possible. <laughs> Moving on for those fun loving players out there, you may have missed one of the more exciting Overwatch experimental cards that went live on April 1st. It's already gone now now, unfortunately, and I knew it was mostly not serious, so I don't know if I can expect any of these changes to go to live, but a pretty funny card where every hero in the game got some sort of wacky readjustment that you could have played with. Some of it's so fun, some of the player base was asking for this to be permanently added into the game, either into the main balance or at the very least, like side modes where they just create wacky variations on the characters. Every character got adjusted, but some of the more wacky ones was Doomfist can rocket punch in every direction, May becomes a tank, Sigma can fly, Ana can nano herself, Reinhardt gets 200% more power steering, it's all very fun. And a shame if uh, you didn't get a chance to try it out. So. With such a positive response, I can't imagine they wouldn't attempt something like this again. At least make it an arcade playlist, Blizzard. I think as well, these types of changes likely are kind of peering into the minds of the devs as they're working towards Overwatch 2, which is all about that heroic expression rather than balance necessarily. And last up for the news, the Overwatch League is coming back with some pretty major changes this year. This time around, they have worked with YouTube to improve the streaming experience. The quality is going to go up to 4K. They've added a clipping feature and as well, the ability to log into your Blizzard account and connect it directly into the YouTube streaming system is streamlined now. So you can earn Overwatch League tokens while the stream is live. And as well, because obviously games will be playing Games are played around the world, and especially the Asian times are at, at the extreme early hours of the morning for us in the West. They are going to replay some matches as well for you to be able to earn tokens watching those live rebroadcasts. Kicking off sooner than you think, 10 days away, April 16th, the first match goes live at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. And yes, I will make a power rankings video yet again this year. So if you wanna check that out, as well as the other guides and content we have planned, finally finishing quite a few videos that I'll be able to get out to you. If you wanna make sure not to miss them, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos go live. Link in the description is our Twitter. Come say hi to us on there. If you enjoyed this video, hit it with a like. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. We'll see you guys next time.